All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're recording this um, for for everyone um, that can't be here and uh, virtually with us. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Nick Morgan, board chair of the Milwaukee LGBT Community Center. Um, and I am going to lead the conversation and presentation today about the new center move. Um, for those of you who don't know, this has been a major project that we've been working on for some time. Um, the process that we're going to go through today is to review how we're approaching the new center and look at some of the finest locations. I'm going to give you the information as to how we narrowed it down. And then I'm going to ask for feedback in regards to what the community at large is thinking um, about our recommendations and any insights or input that, that you'd like to give. Throughout the presentation, I'm going to go through it all. It'll take about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and then if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Otherwise, once I wrap up the presentation, um, we'll do a, a Q&A session uh, where I'll unmute uh, anyone at, that wants to talk and then allow uh, just a little bit of conversation to, to happen about that. Um, but if there's something that comes up during the presentation, feel free to put it in the chat and I'll make sure to, to answer those questions first. All right. So as we're getting started here, I want to do a brief summary on the current location of the center. So as most of us know, the current center is located at 110 West Market Street. Uh, the lease is set to expire on March 31st, 2021. So we're, we're coming up um, to the end of that lease. The current economics or the projected rate for 2021 is an annual rent of 147,000, parking of 13,000, uh, and that's annually, for a total annual cost of 160,000 um, dollars per year. The space is currently 12,000 square feet. However, much of that space is unusable. Um, and so we've calculated that we have approximately 9,600 square feet of usable space um, at the current center. Our timeline, um, so what we're looking at is to move in on April 1st. So if we look backwards, um, we started the process a while ago, um, but as we, we wrapped up the space plan um, in September, and we're working currently on getting construction estimates for the finalist locations. Our goal is to request the lease by 1121 um, and to execute that lease by the end of November in order for us to stay on target with our uh, April moving deadline. Um, we will be doing the construction in the new space between December and February of uh, next year. And our target is to begin to move in March of 2021 for a target rent commencement on April 1st of 2021. As we, get, as we get started, one of the things that we've learned over the last um, couple of years is that we need to be out in the community. We can't just expect for people to, to come to our, our center. The center in our mind acts as a hub and we have a bunch of spoke locations and that's informing a lot of our strategy. So basically what we're saying here is our members aren't in one location and neither should we. Our spokes allow us to have better access to the greater Milwaukee LGBTQ plus community. And so this map here shows all of our various spoke locations. So where we offer services outside the center. Many of these right now are shut down due to COVID, but they were open um, at the beginning of 2020. Um, currently we are offering, offering virtual services and support um, to, to people in that, that manner. Um, on this map, you'll see green icons. Those green icons are locations that uh, are inactive due to COVID, but that we had a location at. The purple icon on here is our current location, um, and orange indicates active locations. Um, I will note that <laughs> Lakefront Brewery is not a location that we have services at, 
that is just uh, Google labeling a, a landmark. So uh, the, the two locations down south here are where we, where we have current offerings. And so you'll see that we're, we're spread out across uh, Milwaukee. Um, we have several locations downtown, several on the south, um, south side in the Walker's Point neighborhood, and um, some a little bit farther north. Um, our plan going into 2021 and 2022 is to expand our spoke location so that we're continuing to be out in the community. Um, and and that, that's critical um, for the types of services we want to offer in the community that we, we want to reach. Um, and that's been quite successful um, to date. When we started our search, we looked at a number of different metrics or, or key uh, considerations when we went through this process. So we looked at costs. So we wanted to keep costs in line or lower than what we're paying now. Um, we wanted to make sure that there was easy access to public transportation. We wanted to make sure that the center was in a welcoming area um, and a location that our, our clients felt comfortable coming to. Uh, the center had to be accessible in a building that was ADA compliant. Uh, we were looking for a building that offered parking or had parking available to uh, our, for our staff and our, our members and our clients. Um, programming space was a critical portion of that. So looking at um, whether or not we have enough space for programming, enough space for staff. Um, we also wanted to be visible. One of the main issues with the current space is it's not very visible and it's also very difficult to find if you're not aware that it exists. Um, we do a lot of events at the center currently, so having an event friendly space was something that we were uh, paying special attention to. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that our locations or our location uh, for the center was near where our clients are. So the people that are using the center, we wanted to make sure that we were in a neighborhood that, um, you know, matched uh, the clientele that we've been serving uh, or that we wanted to serve. Um, and then finally, our, we wanted to pick a location that works with a hub and spoke strategy. So, you know, ease of being able to have mobilization of staff. So, you know, staff could easily grab the supplies they need and go to a spoke location. Um, there's enough storage for the supplies that need to be taken and, and so on. As we continued, um, we started this process in winter of 2019. The board of directors created a location search task force, um, which began the process of identifying a new location. In early spring of 2020, the task force conducted a needs assessment, uh, a member survey, and a demographic analysis to inform the location search criteria. As we approached late spring of 2020, the task force engaged a broker to begin reviewing locations. As we entered early summer of 2020, the task force reviewed over 50 locations and narrowed down options to approximately 15 locations. In late summer of 2020, the task force toured those 15 locations and requested proposals and narrowed down potential locations to, to three finalists. And then, as we're getting into early fall of 2020, the task force has begun to negotiate on the final details of the, of the location. Uh, we're hosting this town hall meeting to request feedback from the community. And we're making final, and we're, we plan to make a final recommendation to the board here in the next couple of weeks. So we have three finalist locations uh, here, and they're the dark orange uh, colors. So the, of the three locations, the first one um, is going back to our roots. For those of you who've been a while, around a while, 315 West Court Street was a previous location of the center. Uh, we had a small portion of that building. If we do end up in that location again, we would take the uh, nearly the entire building uh, and we would take up most of the parking lot um, in that space. There's uh, the Eagle Knit building, which is down in the Walker's Point neighborhood. 
uh, in the, on Second Street. And it, that's a very interesting building um, for a number of reasons, which I'll get into in just, just a bit. Um, and then finally, the, the, the third location is the Fortress. So that's 100 East Pleasant Street uh, in the Brewers Hill um, neighborhood. And so very close to the 315 West Court Street location. Uh, as I get into the remainder of the location details um, for the finalist locations, what I'll say is that the numbers that I'm presenting are uh, where the communication is currently. We do expect that there'll be additional negotiations and that some of the information may change. Um, but to give everyone an idea, we're, we're putting in what the, the current proposals are. Um, all right, so back to our roots, uh, 315 West Court Street. Uh, the rent is $14 a square foot with no additional fee for operating expenses. They're offering a $20 per square foot uh, improvement allowance. Uh, they're offering parking at $50 per stall and currently are not requiring a deposit pending a review of our financials. Uh, this is larger than our current location um, in terms of usable square footage. There's up to 11,500 square feet of usable square footage. It's two floors. Um, the location would be putting in an elevator uh, it does not currently have one, but that would be part of the, the agreement. Um, there's a lot of history with this location, plenty of parking, um, and it would very much uh, meet the needs of, of uh, our programming. There'd be minimal build out needed. Um, the layout is, is, is pretty solid in terms of you know, what, what we need. It mostly requires some demolition of some walls as, instead of addition, which keeps our improvement costs down. Um, the annual rent would be 161,000 with uh, annual parking being at 12,000 for 20 stalls uh, for a total cost of 173,000. The second location is an interesting one. Uh, this is the Eagle Knit. It's 507 South 2nd Street. When doing our needs assessment, uh, the Walker's Point neighborhood uh, was one of the top candidates for locations that uh, were desirable for the center to be in, um, given the ties to the community. Uh, the current rent that they're proposing is $14.50 per square foot with operating expenses of, uh, of uh, $10 per square foot. They're providing an improvement allowance of $50 per square foot and parking of $75 to $100 per stall, again, with no deposit being required. This building uh, requires the least amount of square footage. Um, they offer a lot of shared event spaces that uh, would be available to us with no additional cost. There's also a lot of other businesses in organizations in this building. Um, so the, there'd be increased amounts of foot traffic um, that we'd be able to take advantage of. There's what they're calling an innovation space, a 25,000 square foot innovation space. So if you're familiar with um, like a shared working concept, uh, that's, that's what that, that is. It basically allows people from outside the community to uh, work in, in that building. Uh, we think that, you know, that is beneficial for a lot of reasons um, in the sense of, you know, potential donors, exposure to community, um, and, and so on. Uh, they, this building offers a rooftop deck, um, many shared amenities, uh, lots of foot traffic, as I mentioned. It's in an ideal location and very visible and very close to lots of public transport. Uh, the, it's on several bus lines and it is also on uh, uh, the trolley uh, stops or the streetcar stops. Um, so this, with this one, it's about 6,500 square feet. Annual, square, annual rent is 159,250 with annual parking being about 9,000 um, for a total cost of 168,250. The third location, is the fortress. Uh, 
again, this is in uh, the Brewer Hill neighborhood. Rent is $9.40 per square foot. Operating expenses of $8.60 per square foot. And they're offering an improvement, a tenant improvement allowance of uh, $50 per square foot. This location comes with 20 free parking spots and no deposit is currently being required. Uh, the space is about 8,600 square feet. They do offer a rooftop deck. deck. It's close to public transportation. Uh, it offers a courtyard with grills, a workout facility. Uh, it's pet friendly uh, and does provide some foot traffic um, and is in a much more visible location than we are currently. Uh, the total annual rent here is $155,952 uh, with annual parking uh, costing $0 as a, that's included for up to 20 stalls. So our total cost for this location would be $155,952 per year. The, looking at the comparison of the four different locations, uh, I have them up here. So again, the current location is approximately 9,600 square feet of usable space for 160,000 annually. Court Street offers the most usable space at 11,500 square feet um, and is 173,000 annually. The Eagle Knit is 6,500 square feet um, with many options for uh, shared spaces and uh, uh, event spaces, um, and that is 168,250 annually. And then finally, the fortress, uh, which is a little over 8,600 square feet and is $155,952 annually. Um, that's like, that's a very brief overview of our, um, of our process so far in the three finalist locations. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to ask or for any questions that anyone may may have. Um, uh, there was a question, Eagle Knit. Did you say it's on the streetcar line? Is that right, or is that a future phase of the streetcar? Um, I believe it's currently on a streetcar line, but now that you say that, or now that I'm asked that, I think it might be a future phase. I'd have, let me. I'd have to double check that. Um, so any other questions, um, if you want to raise your hand or put something in the chat, I will, I'm happy to unmute you. Um, uh, if there are no questions, I'd love feedback on locations and if there's uh, any potential uh, recommendations or thoughts on the various locations? Um, so there is a question on how we validated rental rates or market. So uh, yes, the the rental rates are market. They, you know, when we looked at uh, all the various locations. Um, we're actually under rental rate, uh, under market rates for, for most of them. Uh, Court Street seems high, but they are not charging uh, operating expenses and the other locations are. So with that, um, it, it, it balances out. And the reason that the annual rate looks so much higher for Court Street is related to the, um, is related to just the overall size of that, that space. All right. Um, I think I saw someone raise their hand. Was that, uh, if you raise your hand, if you wouldn't mind just doing it again. Um, all right. Um, so there's a couple questions here. Um, the, uh, these locations consideration or Constructions are all ADA compliant. That is correct. Um, every, every building is ADA compliant or will become ADA compliant as part of the lease agreement. Um, John, I see you asked here if we considered a purchase. Um, so we, we did consider a purchase. Um, we, 
We just finished our first uh, strategic review um, for the first time in a very, very long time. And so we wanted to complete, we wanted to get past that, that uh, point before we move into a direction of, of purchasing a building. Uh, some of the strategic vision and, and plan that we've created is about creating more financial stability for the center, which would allow us to consider a purchase in the future. Um, we didn't feel that we were at a point where we could do a large enough capital campaign to do a purchase at this point. Um, but that is something that we considered um, and we, we just didn't think it would be feasible um, currently, but it's something that we're looking to as part of a longer term plan, um, you know, if, if that makes sense as we, we approach the, the end of that period. Um, and I saw Jim raise his hand. Uh, uh, Jim, did you still want to, I know you had a question here. Is it is it Nick? Yeah, Nick. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm. I just wanted to compliment you. I, I tried to do a, do it in the chat. It's nice that the three locations that the <clears throat> board came up with are are um, at least for the most part uh, highly visible mm -hmm. and easily public transportation accessible. I think that's huge. Um, it's not that the current location isn't, but um, it's really invisible mm -hmm. <laughs> as we all know we all know this <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, so that's a really good thing I think that must have ranked pretty high mm -hmm. um, because uh, it, we need to be visible uh, as you would agree and uh, uh, they all have wonderful advantages don't they um, so more space doesn't mean that it's all going to be used does it <laughs> right. yeah i mean so that that's a good point we we are using all the space that we have now part of the problem with our current location is that we are running out of space for programming on certain nights um and so we could use more space um what we like about a place for example like eagle knit is we don't have to pay for all that additional space up front. We can expand into it by um, using it as a shared space with, with someone else. So we save a lot of cost. Um, so we don't need, for example, 11,000 or 12,000 square feet. We can get away with, with less because of that. Um, you know, there, there are trade-offs with that. It's not dedicated, it's not necessarily ours. Um, we have to do more planning and book out farther in advance. Um, but, uh, you know, with, you know, something like Court Street, which, which offers more space than we have currently, um, you know, there, there's some opportunities there. Um, but I, you know, it's, it is something that we considered, um, but we, we think that all three spaces would serve the, would meet the needs of, of the community and the staff. Okay, uh, thank you for that answer. I have one other question. Uh, mm -hmm that comes from my background in uh, music and theater is is it possible that there's any consideration at all of putting some modest sort of theatrical space in the new new um facility that could then generate um maybe some you know, uh, uh, per theater performances in-house that could somehow also generate funding for the center itself? If you haven't thought of it, write it down, because uh, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> uh, I, I muted Catherine. Catherine is our, uh, is one of the, is an architect who's on the board and is leading the committee um, and d doing a lot of the design work. Um, so I'll, I'll turn it over to her. Oh, so she must be taking notes. I am taking notes. Yes. Good. Is, Great. Thank you. Um, yeah. We does, have, that, does my question make sense? 
Yes, it, it, it does. And when we, when we sort of benchmarked with other um, uh, LGBT centers around the country, that was one of the, the things that, that they, they have. Uh, because it brings yes. community and the, you know our community and the the outward community and and that and it gives opportunities to to, to do other programs and like you right. said possibly even rental um, the courtyard space certainly has gives us that lar the largest um, uh, the best advantage for that that we can open up the most space there and get the most you know, ceiling height and, 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 and so forth. Uh, so that plant, that building actually works out pretty well for that. And for those that, of you that really have really long memories, you'll remember that that at one time in the basement was the uh, black box for the Milwaukee rep before they, they moved <laughs> uh, back, back in the 80s. Um, so that, that space works really well for that. Uh, the fortress also has some of that opportunity in, in the amount of square footage we have in the layout. Uh, the uh, uh, Eagle Net, less so. We have, a, we, we have some smaller open space, but as Nick uh, alluded to, that, that uh, in that location, we're sort of off you know, not not taking on those those sort of program needs within our, our 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 structure that we're depending on the building itself. The building has some of that. They don't have a formal sort of theater space, so um, that's a little bit more of a, uh, we'd have to double up a little more to get some of that working. We probably and I think we could probably get something for you know a very small sort of intimate performance, you know, 50 people or something like that. Within yeah, I mean, I'm talking like black box, really, yeah. you know. Yeah, some, something very small and informal. And we're still seeing in all of these, the need to, you know, still have movie nights, still have um, some live, you know, a live performance or, or you know, a, a music or, or a chamber or something like that. But it'd be very intimate. Court Street, we can get larger. There we could actually get, you know, in the little over 100 people or so, you know, a little more. Uh, uh, okay, thank, thank you. So it's, it's in the mix, it's just how formal it is in the mix depends on the, lo the final location. Right. Yeah. The, the nice thing is that all the spaces we are uh, designing, um, like they're not built, with the exception of Court Street, most of the others are blank canvases. So we're able to put in what we want and make the space exactly the way that we, we want it. So it's basically an empty floor that we're, we're putting things into. Um, I'm gonna see, I see you have a question. Let's see, I, um, for whatever reason, it's not telling me your okay. name. Yeah, there you go. Okay, hi, I'm Cindy. Um, I am with uh, the 50 and Better group, and uh, we are a meal site for the Milwaukee County Department on Aging. Um, and so my question has to do with uh, kitchen facilities. Do these offer us a better way to have meals on site? Um, and, um, you know, like when we have our, thanks, our Thanksgiving fast or when we have people uh, from the community come in for for big things are we going to have the ability to to uh, serve people food great question um uh, that is something we definitely considered and all the spaces will have kitchen space uh Catherine, do you want to touch on that yeah all of all of them have that um the uh, Again, Court Street has um, has some existing wet spaces and, and kitchens set up, and um, and in the sort of the preliminary space fit, uh, one of those lines quite nicely with the big open area. So and it and it has a back service entrance also. So so moving in, you know, the food and and having service and 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 that um, is 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 very possible at Court Street. You have to kind of take it upstairs or the front elevator, but it, it you know, it's there. Um, 
EagleNet is um, also very um, well, lays out very well for that. Um, and it was part, you know, for all three of these, that was part of the, part of the equation because we knew we wanted to maintain that, that program. Um, there, they're a little more restrictive in exactly where we put the kitchen so that, you know, that, but, but the idea is to have a catering kitchen so we can roll in carts, have water, have disposal, and have power and counter that we can serve for, for those sorts of dinners or events. None of these we're talking about a true production kitchen or, or, or commercial kitchen or anything like that, because that's just kind of takes you up to the next level. Um, we certainly in all of these can have um, a stove, a microwave, refrigerator, and those sorts of things. So that's, that's also going to be there. Um, some of them lay out better with kind of multiple locations and some it's all in in one spot but we're definitely going to we want to maintain that uh, that program and that service and um, uh, sort of goes back to that larger multi-purpose space which flexes from meals to some performances thank you all right um, I see there are a couple more questions in chat I just want to make sure we get to those um, so how long of a lease period? Um, so it, it varies, um, but most of them are, are 10 years. Several of the locations are offering, um, longer periods of rent abatement. Um, so some locations are offering up to nine months of rent abatement, which means that, uh, for the first nine months, we won't have to pay, pay rent. Um, which allows us to, you know, use that money to, you know, furnish the, the building um, and, you know, build, save up uh, a little bit of money in that first year. Um, so that, that is nice. But uh, for some of these, you know, some of the agreements that we're having and the amount of construction that needs to go into it, um, for that to be included in the lease, we, we had to go with a, a 10 year lease. Um, for the, the needs that, that we we're looking for. Um, and so that's, that's what we're going here. It's a little shorter than the lease for the current space. Um, I believe this one was, uh, I forget exactly now, I think it was 12 years, um, but it was a little longer than 10. Um, but uh, pretty, pretty standard um, from what we saw as we were talking with uh, the various landlords or property management companies. Um, there was a question about images of the interior of the spaces. Um, so we could get <laughs> pictures of the interior of the, the spaces. We did, I didn't have them for this presentation. Um, the, the main thing, like with the fortress, like it's an empty floor. Um, so it, it's, it's not going to look like much until we do a build out. Same thing with, um, the Eagle Knit. And then even Court Street would be be changing quite a bit with uh, with what we'd be doing. Um, so the Walker's Point location, there's a question about uh, the shared space. So um, what I mean by shared spaces is, for, for our purposes, there are meeting rooms um, and event spaces that people have access to, um, and so they wouldn't be exclusively ours but we could schedule uh, time to have that space. Like if we wanted to do an event on the rooftop, for example, we could book that. There's no additional cost for us as tenants. That's included in, in our uh, operating expenses. But um, you know, if we wanted to do an event on the rooftop, we, we could, we just need to schedule it. Um, or if we wanted to use a meeting room that wasn't part of our space um, for a larger event that, that we needed or for a concurrent event, we can book that. And what I like about that a lot is if we're, if we have three events right now at the current center, we're, we're officially out of space. Um, if they're happening at the same time, where at Eagle Knit, we would be able to say, okay, well, we want to have a fourth event. So we just need to book one of these extra meeting rooms. Um, and we, we can flex into that space pretty nicely. Um, 
And so that that's what it means to be a, a shared shared spaces. We do have our own dedicated spaces with our own dedicated meeting rooms and um, you know and, and stuff like that. But it gives us a lot of flexibility um, with with how we manage that in the future. Did I did I get that right, Catherine? Yes. Um, and and the other thing that um, that Eagle Knit is doing is on the ground floor because because that building is a it's a his, you know it's a historic building. It was a fat manufacturing building, um, and then there's an empty lot next to it. Well, it's not empty anymore because there's construction going on. But that's essentially where the new entry and uh, lobby and elevator and core and 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 everything's going. So, <clears throat> and within that, on the main floor, their hope is to have a small uh, coffee shop cafe. So there's essentially going to be a, a, a public welcoming uh, uh, zone that, um, again, we you know we think of it as if somebody's coming to the LGBT center for the first time is not really sure that that they have these kind of gray areas where they can kind of hang out and and build up their courage to to go up to the to the third floor in this case and uh, and come in the second floor um, uh, worker space. Uh, and a uh, uh, computer lab and all that stuff is also sort of seen as that public work zone. So, so there's a couple other of those kind of public work zones that eventually you sort of work up into, into um, uh, the, the LGBT center. The, eagle, the aesthetics of the Eagle Net is the existing building, uh, you know, was built probably in 1890, 1910, somewhere in that zone. It's con poured in place concrete, so it's very heavy, uh, and masonry on the exterior walls, uh, large, huge windows, so it's industrial windows, so they're natural light, they're, they're maintaining, they're putting them back in as for energy efficiency, but they um, may have to maintain the multi-pane look, so it, it, it's a fantastic looking space. The floor itself throughout the whole building is a wood maple floor. So again, beautiful sort of uh, flooring and, and that. Uh, we're taking a combination of, of that old space and some of the newer space, but again, very large windows, this combination of, of raw concrete maple floors and, uh, and red brick masonry. So it's a, it's a beautiful palette to start with. Uh, the fortress is um, the same sort of red heavy brick uh, and heavy timber. So that's wood, uh, wood look. Um, and, and that not as large a windows, but um, all, wind, all the windows are very close to the ceiling. It's a shorter ceiling, but um, so it feels much more open and, um, and, and airy. Windows on both sides of the space because it's a narrow space, but it has natural light on both sides. So again, it's very bright and airy and, and, and inviting and warm. Uh, courtyard, uh, for those of you who remember, is probably the most office-like, but the way we're opening it up and we would see it open up. And again, it has windows on both sides. It's a very narrow building. So there's be a lot, very natural light. There's a, it's a very tall space. Um, so again, it, we, we benefit from that. And the front half of it um, has a lot of the historic uh, wood molding and uh, ceiling trim and that. So that's all maintained there. So again, the, all three of them have a lot of architectural character um, that, that we can exploit and, um, and, and make ours, make, make our own sort of space and what very welcoming. Great. Um, so there's a comment on here from Kevin, a, a five-year lease would offer more flexibility if owning a building is ever in our future. In this market, I'm surprised a landlord wouldn't be happy with five-year term with renewal options. So I think that the, the issue was that if we were going to do a five-year lease, we would have to move into a space where we wouldn't change it much at all. Um, and we didn't um, be, because we want to get the tenant improvement allowances. Um, and so what what happens in that case is it was, it was a trade-off. We either went with a longer lease or we had to get a space that we really wouldn't have fit into exactly right. 
um, or we would have had to find a way to cover those costs ourselves. And so when we weighed those considerations, we went with the longer term, or at least we were, we have, obviously we haven't signed the lease, but we started leaning towards the longer term um, leases so we could, you know, make that, you know, make the changes to the space that we need to make, um, which is, is kind of how we ended up to, to a little bit longer term um, or like a, I guess a, more of a standard term lease. Um, is that, did I miss anything on that, Catherine? No, that, that, that's, that's correct. We, the, the thing that I have to admit, the thing that surprised me when we started this um, and we really got into the lists of properties that were out there and the opportunities. Um, how I mean, you mentioned we had, you know, we started with 50, but I thought we would be starting with hundreds, to be honest with you. I was, I was surprised by the limited number of, of, of opportunities there were. Now we kind of, you know, said, well, you don't want to be right downtown and we have a, a, a rent limit you know, so we're not really into a class A sort of rental structure. But still, I, 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 I anticipated more. And because of that, and because of our rent and all that stuff, we really do have to put a lot more in there. And, and so it is that balance of uh, lease term or, or um, cost up front. I mean, it all comes out to about the same, but um, we don't have the cash to put it in front, up front. So we, get, we go for terms. Um, so, Catherine, I'll, I'll pose this question to you. Um, John is asking, is there a designated space for seniors and youth? Um, and I, I believe the answer is yes, but I'll let you elaborate. Yeah, yes, there, there is. Um, we, we, have been looking at, we have been looking at that. Um, the other thing that we're looking at in all of these um, plans uh, is essentially, now, now, now courtyard, the Court Street is a two-story plan, um, just because of the way the building lays out. So we have, which which gives us some unique opportunities, and they are installing an elevator for us, so um, we have easy ADA access between the floors and the levels. Um, but uh, there, so, and and both both um, Eagle Net and um, uh, fortress are are essentially one one floor. All of them, if you think of a, in some, if if we just keep it in real simple terms, um, the, the the single floors, we're looking at more of a you know think of think of a dumbbell you know where you have a center entry and then you turn left or right and you go to these different functions. So um, that allows us essentially to have sort of a, a larger event and then some smaller meetings and some smaller events and people aren't all kind of bottlenecked through one space. So if we have a larger youth event and we have a larger, or we have, you know, in a smaller or medium sized adult event or vice versa, you know, we, we can kind of send people in these locations. Um, so that's a long answer, I apologize. The short answer is yes, we have that. <laughs> And, and, you know, we're trying to sort of make it that all, everybody can, can come in and sort of find their way to, to their, their meeting, their event, their location, and, um, and they're not um, interfering with, with the other group. Um, and, and still maintain a certain amount of openness that if everyone just wants to have one big large event or large group and, and, and co-mingle that they, we can do that too. So this is, the idea is that there's a lot of flexibility built into these plans. So um, uh, you can um, uh, it change, program's gonna change, things are gonna change, how we live in it, you know, in March of 2021 is going to be different than how we live in it in March of 2023 or March of 20, you know, 2029. Um, because, you know, everything changes. I mean, who, who would have thunk of COVID? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. And, um, and there's a de dedicated PQ space, I believe. In yes. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Um, the next uh, question here is, as a senior, my concern is also with parking. Sometimes 
uh, we feel public transportation isn't safe. Is nine or 10 parking spaces enough? Staff could take up that many spaces. So uh, the Fortress and Court Street have at least 20 spaces. Um, the Eagle Knit, we've put 10 spaces now. Um, we're still talking to them about that. We're a unique organization in that a lot of our services are offered um, in non-peak hours. So, uh, you know, af after, you know, 5 p.m., for example. And so the parking garage isn't as, as full. Um, but uh, we are looking at options with that. Um, with EagleNet, there's a lot of nearby parking options. Um, and so that's that's something that, that we've been considering. Catherine, do you happen to remember uh, how that worked? Um, well, again, you know, I mean, both of them, both of them are saying that there's a lot of parking on the street, um, uh, the Fortress and Eagle, Eagle Net, um, which there is. Uh, and again, fortunately, especially down in the, in the, uh, Walker's Point, our programs are at such a time when, when there's not a lot of demand for the the, the street parking down down in that area. So we're kind of after all the the offices leave and before the bars kind of ramp up. So so we, we've got a good window there. So uh, I've never had problems finding parking down there. Um, I used to have my office across from the fortress. And um, again, the same thing. There's plenty of street parking. There's plenty of um, and, and they are offering uh, some um, on site on site parking. And a parking lot across the um, uh, across the street um, is also available at um, um, Fortress. Um, I think the easiest street parking is probably at Court Street. That's probably you know because there's there's um, there's just less competition over in that area, except maybe on Bucks game night or something like that. But then we saw that as a as a as a way to make money when we'd rent out our parking spaces. So. All right. Um, is there any any other questions, John? Let me unmute you one second. Oh, I didn't know there was a hand. Hello. Hi, John. Hi, Nick. Uh, no, I think you guys done a pretty good job all in all. Um, concerned about something like first utility costs, which is going to, who's paying those utility costs, how much they're going to be. I think that's the variable that we haven't heard about. And I think that's something you have to consider as well. Uh, but I do feel strongly that we need to have designated space both for our seniors and our youth. I think we've lost the, the designated space in our current location for our seniors, we used to have that. And uh, I think that's been a detriment to the, to the senior programs, to be honest. The other thing I'd like to say is that um, I think the visibility that, that the Walker's Point neighborhood for our community has a huge asset to it. And I, I guess uh, if I had to pick between the three right now, uh, I would say that has uh, my reservation about the fortress is that I don't like the idea of uh, wooden floors just from a fire standpoint. I'm concerned about that. And the other thing is, uh, uh, I don't think it's the most accessible location, to be honest. And then finally, the Court Street, to me, I think a lot of people in our community would be like a sense of going backward instead of forward. Uh -huh. So I'll just leave my thoughts at that. Uh, thank you for that feedback. Um, utilities. Um, so the way that that works currently is uh, the center pays for those. That's not part of the rent. Um, and so we would expect to, uh, so all the locations we pay for our own utilities um, in, in this case, um, all the locations have less square footage than the current location. Um, albeit some have more usable square footage like, like Court Street. Um, so we think, we believe that the utilities will be fairly similar um, to what we're paying now, but that is something that, that we'll explore, especially as we're, we're preparing our uh, budget for, for the coming year. Um, 
the I do think that there'd be a decent amount of savings going from where we're at now to somewhere like EagleNet because it's not quite half, but almost half the the square footage um, that we have currently. So some of those costs I would I'd imagine would go down. The other thing we have to remember is in our current location, you know, we have 1990s technology um, versus, you know, 2020. Um, so, you know, even, even as something as simple as the, as the light bulbs, I mean, are much more efficient, much more, much less um, uh, power use and, and that. So um, the, the square footage utility costs we're seeing on all projects are just coming down um, just because of taking advantage of the efficiencies of the, of the new systems, which is a good thing. All right. Um, any other questions? All right. Um, I know that, Amy, I think you're on. Um, I don't know if you want to just talk a little bit from the staff perspective. I know that staff played a pretty big role in uh, you know, doing our research here. I'm going to see if I can get you unmuted. But, um, uh, you know, we, we involved most of the staff in different ways um, to understand their programming needs and, um, you know, made sure that uh, we, we reached out to the people that are in the community so, so we can make some of this plan uh, happen. Um, what I would really love um, if, if people feel comfortable doing it, if, if you would put in the uh, chat what your favorite location is um, or what you think the best location is of the three. Um, that would be fantastic. Um, you know, we're, we know which ones we're leaning towards and which ones we like the best. Um, you know, and some of it will come down to what we're able to negotiate and, and make happen. Um, but uh, community feedback is important. We want to make sure everyone felt that they had an opportunity to, to, to share. But um, if you could take a couple minutes to, uh, or a, a second or two uh, to do that, that would be fantastic. Um, the board will likely make a decision um, here by the end of November. Um, we have our board meeting, uh, I believe it's Tuesday, the last Tuesday of, or the fourth Tuesday of November, um, where we'll be uh, where the committee will be making, or the task force, I'm sorry, will be making its final recommendation. Um, and it, from there, we'll, we'll be approving uh, the direction that we're, we're hoping to go. Um, and so I appreciate everyone's time today um, and all the feedback and questions and comments. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, Catherine, did, oh, uh, Cindy, did you have a question? Okay. Hi, Catherine. This one is for you. Um, I used to go to the LGBT Center when it was on Court Street. Um, and that interior was kind of old and questionable back then. Has it been improved or is that on us to improve it or what? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I have to admit, I don't remember the, the, I remember the LGBT center, but I, I, I couldn't tell you if it's the same or not. Natalie made a comment that some of the, some of the doors that were there and the location of the restrooms and that were the same. Um, <laughs> so I don't think it's, it's changed that much. Um, yeah. You know, our, our goal, our idea really is, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the ceiling, there, there's, you know, like, like in a lot of buildings of that age, 
there's the ceiling that you see, which is basically lay-in tile, and then there's a nice ceiling, ornate ceiling above it that they, you know, because they had to modernize the building. So, so you know, the first thought on that space was really kind of, uh, as, as Nick said, more removal and demolition that we mm -hmm. take out this stuff. Certainly all the carpeting and everything that's there is, is served its life. Um, I know they did do some improvements a couple of years ago, um, did some fluff and buff, uh, but the, um, you know, and when you talked about, you know, some of these other places with more modern technology, I look at Court Street and I'm like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, in, 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 in any of them, we would, we would be updating, um, We'd be updating lighting and, and so forth, you know, and some of, some of those systems. Uh, so, so there is an improvement there. Uh, I think on Court Street, what, what was working for us is really the plan itself. Um, the floor plan, you mean, or? The floor plan, yeah, some of the offices and that. So that's where we get some of our, our savings, but we certainly, you know, it'd be all new carpeting, all new ceiling, all new paint, um, even, even you know, changing some of the doorways around and stuff like that. Yeah, so it, 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 yeah it had an old feel before, and I yeah. was just wondering if, no, you know, I, we, it, go, we went from old to really sparkly new, and then we go back to the old, or do we go yeah, to different right. sparkly no, new, or, no, you it's, know? <laughs> it's, um, I, I think, you know, we want to sort of honor sort of the old details at Court Street, but not, um, not have it um, constrain us. Okay, so, great. Thank you very much, Catherine. Yeah. All right, Dean, I think that's you. Uh, yep. Next. yep. Um, I'm one of the volunteers there and I worked uh, front desk on Tuesday nights. And actually about 20 years ago, I used to work in the building just right next to the, the community center on the fourth floor of the Blatt Center. And one of the hardest things I had to do was trying to tell people where we were located. <laughs> oh. uh, and that's still one of the problems I have now that I'm volunteering there. So I love the visibility of the new locations. I think uh, the Court Street is my, would be my preference um, just by what I'm hearing and seeing. Um, but I just love the visibility of all of them, to be honest with you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, John, did you have, I think you're, you're next. Yeah, I, I, I want to comment on one thing about the Court Street that we haven't talked about, and that's the exterior and the entry. In the wintertime, you're very icy, very slippery. People slip and f have slipped and fallen getting in and out of that building, to be honest. And I... I I have a real problem as a senior and other seniors as well down the road here, getting in and out of that building. It's on a slope. It's a, it's an issue. And yeah. I think you have to consider that. Yeah. I, I, I have to admit, I mean, that, that, that was, that's probably the biggest concern I have with that is the slope entry. Um, you know, plan wise and all that stuff, it works out really well. It's, but it's really is the, the slope, the slope entry and um, you know if you if if you're not doing well with steps you have a you know we come in there's a lift there you go up the lift and then you go back to an elevator if you need to go up to the second floor so it's kind of a two-step process um, you know it is an older building that they haven't addressed that um, haven't made those big upgrades like fortress and um, and, and eagle net where they're basically just saying you know, we're just going to gut it and start over, um, you know, so that, that, yes, that is a concern. Um, you know, I think maybe if we're more in control of the building, maybe our maintenance, you know, we just have to figure out a better maintenance program or something. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'd, we'd, we'd certainly want, we want to have a safe entry piece. Yeah, it's a concern. They'll weigh heavily on our decision for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Thanks, John. Uh, as always, I appreciate you bringing up uh, those important topics. Um, 
that that's actually very, very valuable um, and exactly what we're trying to get out of these sessions. So I appreciate that. All right. Um, well, we're right at seven and I promise I'd only take an hour of everyone's time. Um, <laughs> if there are any other questions or anything else that we can do, don't hesitate to reach out to the center. Um, we will be making an announcement um, as soon as we've made a decision um, about which location we're, we're going to go to, and then we'll have some exciting uh, updates for you then about, about our next steps. And, you know, we'll be able to share our journey as we move into the new location. And um, there's a lot of bright things in the future, I think, in 2021 uh, as we, we make these decisions. And so we'll, we'll continue to share information and really appreciate everyone's time today and, and feedback. Um, and tomorrow's uh, election day. Uh, if you haven't voted, make sure to, to do so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.